Hi everyone, this is Brandon Mavlios from Datasite. Uh, I am here today with uh, Stella Benkovich, and uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit about our segment in Women in Deal Dealmaking. Uh, so Stella, uh, very happy to have you today. Uh, can you please just give a quick introduction of yourself? Yeah, sure. Brandon, thank you so much for having me um, and for thinking of me in this endeavor. Uh, my name is Stella, as you mentioned. Um, I'm just starting my second associate year at MOLIS and just joined our FinTech team, which I'm really excited about. Um, I graduated from Columbia Business School in 2019, um, really enjoyed Columbia Business School. I'm having uh, a really interesting time full of learning and banking, so I'm happy to shed whatever light I can on this experience as a female. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, for first question for you, uh, what was your path into investment banking and uh, what ultimately got you interested in investment banking? Sure, yeah. So, um, you know, I had two experiences right before business school. One was at Goldman Sachs on the public side, so we really didn't touch advisory work. Um, and then the second uh, was at an insurance tech startup called Liaison. Uh, and during my time there as an early employee, uh, Liaison sort of scaled and was bought by a public company. We were bought by, uh, at the time, Towers Watson, but then six months later, it became Willis Towers Watson. Um, and I, it was exciting because I got to be involved in, in the acquisition and it really piqued my interest in um, acquisitions, in transactions, in what it means to think about valuation and what it means to think about companies coming together from both a financial and a somewhat operational perspective. Um, and the other thing I noticed is that, you know, as this transaction was kind of going on and being consummated in the background, um, both parties were very, very invested in it, right? So this was a really high stakes thing that was going on, not just for our founding team, which of course, you know, this is a company they put years of work into and were about to monetize, but also for, the board and the management team of a major public company. Um, and something I've known about myself over time is that I'm motivated by impact. And so something I also really liked, other than the idea of thinking of putting companies together, is that when you're doing this, this is very top of mind for most people involved. And I really liked the impact that's involved in it. Um, and I figured that if I can do this across different companies, uh, different sets of buyers, different sets of targets, I probably wouldn't have uh, a dull day. And um, that's certainly kind of been the truth. So that's great. Yeah. And it, it helps also you've had you had that experience um, kind of working in different areas of financial services before you got into your current role. Um, and, and so for those that are either you know, still in college and are thinking about investment banking or are maybe doing their their MBA and are thinking about investment banking, you know, what advice do you have for, for other women that um, are thinking about or, or want to enter the space? Yeah, so I'll just say a couple of things, right? And they're gonna be, they're gonna be as honest as honest gets, right? This space is not for the faint hearted and definitely not as a woman. Um, I think all the investment banking organizations across the board have, you know, a ton of work to do and a ton of ground to make up in terms of making it a space that is palpable, welcoming, um, and embracing of women, right? So I'm not going to deny that that is a reality and that's a reality that you have to consider, right? Because it's going to mean that some days will be tough and you're going to have to have thick skin. And I'm not even talking about for the reasons that your hours are long and your learning curve is steep. I'm just talking about simply like the idea that you might look up and there is like one woman inside of you, right? Um, but on the bright side, the work is incredibly interesting. You are working with the best of the best, truly. Um, you are getting to sit in meetings where you know, people with capital are making very, very important decisions and you're understanding how that's being made. And like something to always keep in mind is that like, you know, this world, it'll ask of like damn near perfection of you. But, you know, when you kind of zoom yourself out through activities or through friends or through whatever you do in a world outside, you realize that like the training it gives you puts you, you know, head and shoulders above other people, no matter what you want to do 
afterwards. And I think that to have that skill set, to have that background, to have that credibility as a woman, no matter what you do, whether you stay and, and you know, um, excel in investment banking or whether you leave and go on to do something else, I just think is um, is a really amazing opportunity that is not to be counted out just because, sure, there are some difficult days. So I, I think like both sides need to be considered and given weight to as a female um, because both are very important, very important considerations. Yeah. And, and so you mentioned, you know, in, in, at least today, it's still the industry very predominantly male. Um, and we know things have, have started to change a little bit. Um, and, and just speaking to you and knowing that you have some work experience in or quite a bit of work experience throughout financial services and seeing investment banking, seeing other groups within um, within other banks. Um, have you seen the industry change at all for women in the course of your, your career? And whether you have or have you not, um, are there any sort of female mentors you have, whether it be in your firm, um, holistically, um, you know, across the industry? Uh, yeah, just wanted to kind of get your thoughts in, on, on that topic. So it's interesting. I think mentorship is always a very, very interesting topic, right? Because, um, you know, look, I think I have mentors that are both female and male. I have mentors that are both in financial services and outside of financial services, because I think it's very important to amalgamate, um, you know, different points of view, because you never know how they're going to apply, right? Somebody doesn't necessarily need to sit in the very seat that you're sitting in to be able to give sound advice. Um, you know, I'll say without hesitation that um, one of the reasons why I gravitated toward the FinTech team is because it, ha it has a male MD on it. Sorry, a female MD. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Female MD, yeah. right? Um, and like that's absolutely natural, and I'm proud of that. But I think the other thing to remember is that like your career is long and windy, right? And I think it's important, while it's important to have sponsors and it's important to have somebody that's going to extend their hand to you and say, Hey, I'm gonna teach you how this works. I also think it's important to kind of hedge yourself and not like die on any one sword or on any one person and to understand that actually these learning opportunities are in everyone all around you right so you might be on a deal call and there might be like a male and and like a female or there might be several males and one female likely that'll be the scenario and what i've kind of been teaching myself to do is pull pieces from everyone right to watch what everyone is kind of doing in their own right and in their own authenticity and of course in their genders um and kind of like pull best practices from everyone across the board, because I think that's its own learning and its own indirect mentorship, right? Um, and, I would, and I think that that's important. And I would say the last thing is that like organic mentorship more likely than not comes from like doing good work. So, and I think that's important, right? Folks are not just going to mentor you because you're a woman and they want to see you advance, then more likely than not, they're going to want to mentor you because you do great work and oh, by the way, right? And so I think that's a piece that, that should never be forgotten in this conversation that like more likely than not, folks want to invest in you when you kind of like produce for them. And that's just the reality of it. Yeah, and that, so that's great advice. And um, I think one thing you had mentioned too is it's not necessarily about having you know one mentor or 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 two mentors, but really kind of learning best practices from everyone and, and building out kind of your knowledge base from there and, and your skill skill set from there. And I think that's actually a, a good transition in, into another question I have um, in terms of networking in general and any sort of networking groups. Um, you know, I know here at Data Site we we sponsor Exponent Women. Um, and, and, and groups like that. But um, have you in your career um, tapped into any of those groups? Um, have you, you know, um, found anything that, that interests you in terms of um, associating with, with any of those, those types of organizations? Um, has that been a benefit at all? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, at Goldman, there was a, a really large women's group that, of course, I attended events for and stuff like that. At Molus, it's a little bit different. I think Molus, in some ways, because of our size, is still developing some of these things, but um, we've brought in several uh, female speakers who I've enjoyed and I've really carved out time to either listen in or go to those meetings, regardless of what's going on. Um, and then outside of work, I'm involved in um, like a Jewish, like a Jewish women's group that started in my community, right? So I think that these 
opportunities are actually all around us, again, not just directly in our office. I think it's important to cultivate those relationships outside of the office because especially as you kind of excel or go on, you know, things become a lot less about like PowerPoint and a lot more about relationships and paths cross in so many different ways. Um, and I also think, you know, and I'll say one other thing that I think like stands to be said around this and around networking, which is that like, other than taking in mentorship, I think that there's always an opportunity to be a mentor, right? And to use whatever platform you have, small or large, to influence someone else, right? So I've showed, I've tried to show up in a million and one ways for like our handful of female analysts who sit around me or who I'm hearing speak about something when they were having a hard time or even if they've had questions. Um, and frankly, like I said, we're spending, you know, 80 hours together some weeks. How can you not use that as a platform to have an influence or to show up for someone else in your capacity as a friend, a female banker, an influence, et cetera? So I think just like you think about getting it, you should also think about giving it because I think that's just as powerful. Excellent. Great, and um, so thanks for, for all the, the feedback and, and advice. Um, any last words in terms of lessons learned from your career or any any final final advice for, for again, women, women in deal making or those that will be entering? Uh, yeah, to- I mean, you know, again, I don't purport to, to have, you know, such a long standing career or, or to know it all, but I just think that like on many days, it's important to like try to play the long game and try to have a long view. And what I I think that that allows you to better zoom out of like the day-to-day challenges and hiccups and back and forth and mistakes and things that happen and they will happen. Again, like the job is not simple, Um, but if you play the long game that is about investing in getting better, that is about investing in yourself, that is about investing in you know, whatever it is that you're doing at that moment and, and doing it well, I think that that helps kind of levitate or zoom yourself out of what may feel like daily setbacks. And I think specifically, again, as women, because we don't have as many people to go to or as many examples to look at, I think that if you start with that long game mindset, um, it can be helpful. Great. Well, again, thank you, Stella. I uh, appreciate you joining us today. Uh, really good advice and insights for for those, like I said, that are either going into the industry or are already in the industry and, and thinking about how to manage their careers. So um, again, thanks for thanks for the time today. Of course. Thank you.